Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, it's all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging stories, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, make sure to subscribe, like, and share. It means everything to us. So everybody likes to eat. Okay, I like to eat. And we go to restaurants. We learned to cook when we were six and the whole thing. But what is happening now? We eat out more than ever. Fewer of us are learning to cook at home. So what does that do for our kids? Today, I'm going to introduce you to Chef Maria Luna Delgado, a.k.a. Chef Maria. And she's going to talk to us about our kids and cooking. Hey, Chef, how are you? Ricky, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure and a treat. This is going to be so much fun. Okay, chef, you heard the intro. Our kids are eating out. McDonald's is king and no one's learning to cook. What are we doing with our next generation of chefs? We need to start getting them in the kitchen early on. The earlier, the better. So then that way they could understand where their food comes from and they become food explorers, just like my students. Okay, you said food explorers. I love that. Let's talk a little bit. First of all, Chef, how did you get started cooking? When and where did you learn to cook? Uh, my mom, thankfully, she started me in the kitchen about five years old on a crate. So I'm dating myself right now. Um, I assisted her at, you know, at home during holidays, which were very important. And she was a such a wonderful, wonderful cook. And I learned from her. And then I continued on my journey as well. That is awesome. So what possessed you to go on and then become a chef? I mean, cooking is one thing. I can cook, girl, but I ain't a chef. What's the difference? Uh, consider it a change in career. So I was basically more in the legal field for numerous time. And then I got pregnant with my son and he was a big inspiration. And after I left the career of being, you know, a paralegal, I said to myself, hmm, so I ended up becoming a certified uh, wellness coach. So that started when he was initially born. And then I went through another change in life. And then I told my husband, you know, I think I want to go to culinary school. I want to learn like the whole process and learn how to fabricate meat. I want to, you know, be able to complement, you know, my certification. Um, and I think that it's important because of the fact that I want to gear everything towards children. And then he was like, um, are you sure about that? Are you sure you want to be in the restaurant business? Are you sure this is such a hard industry? And I said, well, I said, my thing is, is that I want to be able to teach the children properly. Um, and I'm not there to become a celebrity chef. I, I understand, you know, the hard work and I respect all the chefs that work in the industry because it is a hard industry. I said, but it's more geared to inspire children to become, you know, aware where their food comes, become, you know, expand their palate um, and also explore, you know, the world through different cuisines. I, I think that is so cool. I like that you said, you know, food explorer and, you know, having them upgrade, if you will, their palate. So why kids? Why not go into another restaurant and, and create another fabulous menu? Why kids? Um, I did work in the industry for a couple of years. Um, I did work in uh, at Oceana, uh, right in right across the street from Rockefeller Center. Um, it was hard work, uh, but that wasn't my thing. I feel that children are our future. Um, they need to understand that, you know, health is wealth, right? Oh. Um, making the proper choices. Uh, my son, uh, ever since he was little, he was in the kitchen. Nine mm -hmm. months old, he was in his seat. He was on the floor. Every time that I was cooking something, I would slice, have him smell it. And he progressed, you know, at 15 months, he was doing his own spice mixes. I would give him all the things. 
we wouldn't use him because of course he was just dumping and sure. eating, <laughs> you know, but it was more for his exploration. Mm-hmm. Then in our little yard in Astoria, Queens, mm-hmm. um, we raised chickens. We had like a little mini garden and, mm-hmm. you know, every spring, you know, he would help, you know, in planting what we were going to grow that summer. Right. And, you know, he was raised in farms. I was mm-hmm. always exploring with him, you know, right. and I think that that's what was important for him. Now he's able, you know, to decipher the food is good, the food is bad, the food, no, no junk food, you know, and I feel that as um, as parents, you know, we need to elevate that. We need to, you know, not be afraid to have our children, you know, explore and to be able to say, oh, okay. Like I tell my students, you know, it's okay to try. Nobody yucks their yum. Um, I think that uh, it's important for everyone to understand every other culture and um, to explore that and elevate that and be aware that it's not chicken nuggets all the time or mac and cheese. Yeah, I, I, I dig that so much because now you see, you have so many of the parents, hey, if I can't pull it together, let's order something. You know, let's get something. You know, I like what you said that health is wealth. And I guess when you start them young, you can grow that thought up in them and we'll have healthier adults. So as you're, when you have your students, what kind of things do you, do you teach your younger students? Well, we just did uh, a table for six event. So that's more like a pop-up for me that I wanted to do for numerous years with an idea. And I did it last year for an adult only. And then I said, you know, I said, I'm going to do it with the kids. I'm going to have them see how the back of the house of restaurants actually work. And the way that they're going to do it is they're going to serve their parents and they're going to create the menu. And so I sent out the email to the parents and I had the kids dress up, you know, like in a uniform and it was a Valentine's um, event and we did French cuisine and the kids were so excited and we had, we had the parents dress up and they were very elegant and the kids were so into it, you know, and they were into the whole French cuisine and we did a nice French bistro salad and I did cocoa vin and they were like, what is that? And then I went through the whole education, you know, and then I, I, I actually, you know, said, and Julia Child, and she had like this amazing show and they were like, huh? Who? And I was like, <laughs> okay, as you guys get older, you guys will understand. Yeah. And then we ended up doing a cream brulee and they felt powerful with the torch. Of right? course. <laughs> and it turned out well and the parents loved it. And the way that I kind of mixed it up was that the kids were not serving their parents. They were serving the other set of parents. So everyone had a table. And it turned out very, very well. So I try to do as much global as I can with them. You know, last year as well, too, I did a whole four-week program where we visited four different countries. They had their own little passport that I was able to find, and we would stamp them. So we did Mexico, we did Asia, we did Italy, and each one, we had a PowerPoint presentation and it worked out so well because they were kind of like okay you know we're in France we did crepes you know and they understood that so that's where I try to teach them that it's not only our little box because we always need to get out of that box and we need to explore and by exploring we're totally learning new things and educating just like myself, you know, and my kid as well, too, you know, when he was 10, you know, we went to Europe, him and I, and we did, we went to Italy and we stayed at an organic farm, you know, in the, in the mountains. And, you know, every night it was family meal with all these different visitors from different countries. And he learned so much and, you know, I love it. And I love teaching kids because they are so willing yeah, they're still wanting learn. to learn new stuff. Yeah, they don't yet exactly. have it all. So what age group do you teach? Um, I have as young as five and as old up to 13. So the way that I try to mix it, I don't turn anyone away. 
And the way that um, we kind of like mix up the classes is that the older ones help the little ones, right? So we have a structure, um, we have a routine, you know, wash your hands, hairs up, you know, put your apron on, get your mise en place together. And the older ones kind of like help the little ones and it shows that they're actually grasping and actually learning. So they know they're like, hey, you know, like you don't have your apron on. Uh, let me help you. So it kind of works out because everyone works as a team. And that's what's key is working as a team. Liz, you know, you, you think of all of us growing up, at, you know, those of us who are a certain age, you know, we had to learn to cook. And if you had more than one sibling, you were and depending on where you were in the lineup, you helped your younger sibs stand on the crate, get the knife, you watched them, you made you turned on the stove for them. And I love it that what you said, how they were the ones, you, like your son was throwing spices together, but he had somebody there. Do you think that a lot of that is lost right now with the way our culture has changed? You know, everyone's eating out. People aren't cooking at home anymore. Do you, do you feel that that's lost? You know, yay McDonald's, that kind of thing? Um. Yes, I, I think that now with, the gen, with this generation, uh, everything is social media. Right. Everyone is, you know, plugged to their phones. Um, parents are busier than ever, you know, and you can't blame them because the same with me, you know, like I'm always running around and I try my very best to cook as much as I can. Right. So if he wants Chipotle, I'm like, you know what? Let's recreate it. At let's get, let's and, do Chipotle. At you know, home, yeah. let's do it like that. You want cilantro rice? Let's knock it out of the ballpark. Yeah, and it's worked out it. well. Mm -hmm. And when I first moved here, and I come from New York City, right? So I'm New York City trained. I am New York City educated. I am a city girl at heart. I love my city. Um, and when I first moved here, I couldn't understand why there were so many drive throughs right? And, and all these, you know, kind of fast food restaurants. And I honestly hadn't seen, because in New York City, you don't have a, a drive through Starbucks, right? So I, I would ask my husband, like, what is going on? And as I continually, you know, rooted and started integrating myself here, I learned that they don't have the times. So it's so car dependent here. So everything is to drive through. You know, everything is like, okay, come on, you got 20 minutes of lunch, let's go and drive, you know, to the fastest and the closest, you know, fast food restaurant. So I, I think that now there is kind of like a little shift, you know, like I've seen a shift where parents are interested more in learning, you know, and trying to incorporate, you know, healthy meals, being healthy and kids mirror their parents, right? Okay. So we are their first influence, right? We're their first inspiration. So they do as they see. That's so, so true. So if you, you know, if you start integrating one day a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start someplace, right? That, yeah. That's the way that it should go. Now, Chef, you also wrote a children's cookbook. Is that correct? Um, it's in the process. Um, and it's it has some recipes in the back. Uh, and uh, the illustrations are being done. I'm kind of excited. Um, I had a little setback last year, but, you know, God, right? Hey. You know, he sets you up on that setback for a bigger comeback. Well, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, by the end of the summer, everything should be up and ready and buttoned up and, you know, straight to publishing. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited. It's I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. While I was going to culinary school on the train, going back home. So every time I would go to <laughs> culinary school in the morning, I'd be like, okay, I'm like taking control of a corner seat on that train. You know, I need to write. And the same after my day at school, I would definitely just take little notes. And yeah, it's exciting and scary. And there's a lot of Oh, yeah. <laughs> So the book should be out. I'm kind of excited. There's a lot of surprises in it. Um, there's also a, a couple of things that I have in the works that's going to complement the book as well, too. So, yeah, it's the little setback is, is gearing me up for a bigger comeback. Let's just hope. Well, then we're going to be excited for your comeback. So, Chef Maria, if someone wanted to reach out to you, where could they find you? Uh, they could send me an email at chef at culinarywellness.nyc and all my socials are on there. Awesome. And don't worry, everybody. If you didn't get that, 
all of her contact information is going to be in the description below. But don't forget, while you're here, make sure to subscribe, like, and share, because we want to make sure that you get as much information as you possibly can. And also, if you're here and you know somebody who might be interested in being on our show, whether they have an inspiring story, a topic we absolutely have to talk about, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us an email. Chef, my friend, before I let you go, <laughs> we have to play a game. Okay. All right. So this game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things and you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? Yes, I am. All right. Let's do this. Android or iPhone? Android. Ooh, read the book or see the movie? Read the book. Mm, wallflower or life of the party? Life of the party. Of course you are. Come on, chef. Summertime <laughs> or winter wonderland? Summertime. Mm, yeah, that's why you live in Florida now and not New York. Okay. Eat to live or live to eat? Uh, eat to live. Really? See, I'm of the. I live to eat. I love food. Oh my gosh! All right, out in nature or stuck in the house? Out in nature. All right, Coke or Pepsi, Chef? Water. <laughs> I love it. Spoken like a true culinary genius. Perfect. <laughs> Drive the car or ride in the car? Ride in the car. Okay. I like sports or I don't care? I like sports. Okay. And finally, Chef, what was your first job? Uh, working at McDonald's. Wow. A chef that worked at McDonald's. Did you know you wanted to be a chef at that time? Uh, after that experience, I only lasted there a couple of weeks. After that, <laughs> I was like, I need to learn how to make my own nuggets. There, oh, there you go. <laughs> Chef Maria, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Ricky. And one more thing, congratulations on your book. Because look. Oh. <laughs> Girl. I read it. I loved it. It was very inspirational. And, you know, all the best to you as well. And I thank you and I appreciate you for this opportunity. I thank you so much. Y'all, that's it for this time. But don't worry, we'll be back with some more. Faith on Friday presents Clear. Perfect. Whoop, whoop, whoop.